Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not to Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. A lot of interesting things went down in this episode. No shape or form did I actually think Talbot would turn into the bad guy that he is. But to be fair, it is a situation where it's like anyone who's got a gravitonium in them kind of goes a little nuts. And being as powerful as he is, it's kind of... Uh. I mean, it's like, how do you really fight that? I mean, like, obviously I'm skipping around, but I would have expected Daisy's powers to actually do something to him. But I guess maybe if she can focus her. I mean, I guess it's so in his system that you can't just scramble. Because she can manipulate Gravitonium, but maybe she pushed her powers enough. She can end up doing something to Talbot. I don't know. I mean, because at first it seems like he's of sane mind. I mean, he's kind of bossing people around, telling the Confederacy to kneel before him. Even talking about the fact that he brought Coulson along. Because, oh, come on, me and my best wing make an ambulance. And it's like, Coulson's like... Uh, oh, sure, okay. Um, it's also interesting learning that the Confederacy, I guess it makes sense, uh, isn't just made of the aliens that we've come across so far. It's actually like six different species working together that make up the Confederacy. Also, it turns out the whole deal they made with Hydra, actually complete and utter BS. It was just for them to get inhumans, resources, as well as Gravitonium. Just because what Gravitonium can do, it can be used to build empires, break them down, in space so it's kind of like a key component to kind of doing what you need to about it so like the whole plan was never to really help out earth in the first place which kind of makes sense because they're the ones who apparently kind of sell well can we end up finding out that one of the family one of the species on the confederacy is decree uh because they have Cassius's dad being there which is very interesting but i guess like he's probably the one that was like oh well, 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 well we can take humanity you know maybe he decided to take humanity off the confederacy's plate because it makes you wonder how did it trick because the whole like Cassius running things in the future is because his dad banished him so it's like the lighthouse situation was just kind of like a like a punishment thing so i guess like maybe earth wasn't as valuable to him. i mean maybe i mean to be fair maybe that's why things work out i don't know because at the end of the episode he ends up getting daisy so it makes you wonder is it a situation where it's like the reason why we couldn't don't know where Daisy ended up the last time we saw her is because she well no no because that shows that she's there in the future because we still haven't gotten to that scene where it's like oh this is the last time Daisy was ever seen so she must escape in some shape or form it's kind of interesting that it kind of circles all back around like that Kasaya's dad wanted to destroy your world Daisy but you know Kasaya's in well, his one of his sons attempts to get her later on it's just it's just kind of interesting how that all kind of works out like that what well, was also interesting too that. Uh, Talbot didn't actually kill one of the guys. He actually absorbed him. So I wonder, I mean, like he's very powerful with the Gravitonium, but I'm wondering the more people he absorbs, just the stronger he gets too. I would assume that. I mean, because it makes you wonder why he decided to absorb that one instead. But I guess by absorbing it, any information it probably has, he has too. Because it's interesting because for him, he's like, oh, the, those two inside the Gravitonium try to tell me what to do. It's like, oh, those losers just needed a general to kind of take command. Like, that was also the thing too. It's like, Gravitonium, the little bit, trying to drove Ruby crazy. But because of Glenn's situation, and that, that's something I was wondering about too. It's like, maybe his situation would make it harder for him to control. It's like, it kind of, I think makes this situation a little worse. I think he that the reason why he's so paranoid and so believing everyone's like trying to doubt him and stuff like that is because of what was already kind of messed his mind was already kind of messed with. Like it's the condition he was left in after the um LMD Daisy shot him. I think that condition has kind of been magnified by also what uh Hale did to him, but also what um the Gravitonium is kind of doing to him because he's just kind of. I also did like the conversation with him being like, "How do I look in, in his new outfit?" And Coulson's like, "Actually, you look pretty cool." So, but um, like I say, it's just weird to think that Talbot would be like the main antagonist essentially. Just, I mean, to be fair, the main antagonist technically is um Thanos. Because I didn't know this was going to... Like, because I had a feeling, because it's like, oh, there's an alien invasion. It's like, oh, it's got to be Thanos in it. It turns out that is the case. That's the one that they were warning that. They were like, oh, yeah, like, Hydra kind of knew about what's coming. Like, that's what it was. So, once, sadly, once again, at the time of the recording, I have not seen uh, Infinity War yet. I know I'm, I'm an idiot. I just haven't had a chance to just... I need to. I want to so badly. I, I, it might spoil some things because there's certain things that kind of pop up in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. that kind of connect to the movies. Like, the fact is that uh, Peggy died during Civil War was kind of spoiled last season because they kind of hold up a picture of being like, oh, yeah, like that she was 
because like Cap goes to her like her wake in the movie. And so it's just, it's never big, big things, but I mean, that's just one thing. Like, I don't know. There's always, because I was actually thinking Infinity War had already happened and it was over with, but it seems like, I mean, to be fair, it probably hasn't been a huge amount of time in between last episode and this episode in the grand scheme of things. All go, it's probably been like maybe a couple hours. So probably like, I'm sure Infinity War took over the court place over the course of, it's, it's a whole thing. Nevertheless, um, that is kind of interesting because even I was like, oh, let me go down and take. It's like, would you even be able to do anything to Thanos even with the gravits on him? I don't know. But obviously it's like, well, obviously you're not going to be able to do anything because we're keeping the TV shows and the movies separate. So we're going to have some excuse for you not to take part. It's it's just, you know, nitpicking. That's all. But um, still, it's kind of sad that things kind of turn out the way they did with Hell. Um, her dying. Kind of didn't see that coming. The moment she tried to like do the whole like brain controlling Talbot, I kind of knew it was over. It was interesting because she tried to throw uh, Coulson under the bus because Coulson was like, no, I didn't call S.H.I.E.L.D. They're here to back us up. But, like, she was like, no, I tried to warn him. It's like, because for her, she was trying to take advantage of the situation because she knew Talbot couldn't be talked to, can't be talked down. So she was trying to, like, be, make sure to stay on his good side. So she knew arguing for Coulson would just piss him off even more, so... I mean, because it's sad, too, because, like, for her, she talks about the fact that her anger about everything kind of being passed over. She had built that anger up, and rather than kind of appreciating what she had, all she did was feed into what, you know, plans uh, Hydra had for her, for her to give birth to the world destroyer, essentially, for Ruby to become what they wanted her to be, kind of their prized uh, weapon essentially and if she was so focused on that she could i you know i'm sure she just has regrets of not being the mother she wanted to be because for her she's like i had nothing you know it's like everything she ever did and wanted to build was for ruby and it's just like now that all kind of means nothing now so it's kind of sad because i was thinking maybe on some level it wasn't going to work like that i'm sure but i was thinking maybe when it's all said and done maybe instead of you know, trying to save colson colson be like hey maybe you could do something to try and bring back ruby i mean it's crossing that line again that you know the whole tahiti project with me but at the very least maybe this can do something you know make give them a happy ending i thought it was going to be the case but it's like nope uh sadly things are the way they are both hell and ruby are gone so you also even had, like, that fight between Yo-Yo and Daisy. Wasn't expecting that. They're obviously, like, pissed at each other for many different reasons. Obviously, Daisy's still pissed about the whole Ruby situation. It's like, you trying to take things into your own head. But, you know, Yo-Yo's kind of pissed at Daisy for that same reason. Because it's like, because you are off doing something else. Especially because in Yo-Yo minds, it's like, saving Coulson is the reason why everything kind of falls apart. That's probably what she meant specifically. It's not just the act of actually saving Coulson, which has kind of been my thought process that trying to save Coulson ends up creating a bigger problem. It's like inadvertently because she was off trying to save Coulson that led to her not being there when uh, they, when they were attacked last episode. So I guess that's kind of more so what, but you know, it's also Yo-Yo just kind of, you know, she just pissed at Daisy because it's just kind of like, you kind of abandoned us, but at the same time, Yo-Yo's kind of going through her own thing, too. Obviously, you know, she's probably lashing out, too, because things between her and Mac, because, you know, it's just, I mean, everyone's trying to handle this situation the best they can, because for Daisy, her main focus has been, like, saving ghosts, and she even goes to, like, Simmons about, like, oh, here's that centipede thing, and here's my mom, like, trying to make something happen, and it's like, um... You know, morally, we shouldn't do it. It's like, what's the moral problem here? Do you want Coulson to live or die? It's like, it's not, do you want Coulson to live or die? Oh, you want to live? Okay, then get to it. It's like, it's so sad because, like, Daisy's so fixated on it. Maybe if Coulson had prepared her more for this, maybe things wouldn't be the way they are. I mean, she did kind of explain, because the reason why she's so fixated on it is because of all the people she's lost. Because it comes, comes up in conversation about Lincoln. Like, he was kind of like, you know, just when they were kind of getting good uh, to being something he's gone, and that, that loss, we saw what that did to her in season four, like, she blamed herself, she was filled with so much anger and sadness about it, and it's like, if Coulson dies, like, she will probably be even worse than that, there might not be any pulling her back this time, um, which is sad on one thing, Deacon learning about that whole Lincoln situation, it's like, oh, Who's oh who's Lincoln? I was like oh, and he's like yeah. She's like yeah. He was a he he was a guy you know. And she's like oh, it sounds like you love that guy. And it's like yeah, I did. I kind of still do. And it's so sad because Deacon was going to confess his feelings to Daisy, but he backed out because he heard that. She's like so what were you going to tell me? And he just tells her about the Fitz and Simmons being his grandparents situation. And it's like he's like she's like really what? 
And it's sad because it's like, he, you see moments of like when she's like, I'm glad you came and she holds on to his arm. So you know that makes him a little happy. Once again, I still get the inkling that Deacon's going to die at the end of this. Maybe when it's all said and done, Daisy might find out about how he really feels about her. Might not. I mean, other people know. Colson knows. Mac knows. It'll probably be a situation that she goes the entire like rest of the season not knowing. Or it might make things worse when he... I mean, him dying might be what sets her off at the end of the episode. I mean, at the end of the season or whatever. When she goes up... Most likely goes up against Talbot with this whole situation. Like, the last time we see her. That might have something to do with Deacon dying. Might even be about Coulson dying. I don't know. Because another thing that came up in this episode, too, is like... Mac is pissed at everyone. In particular, you know, obviously Yo-Yo doing what she's been doing. Uh, kind of keeping his distance. But he's also kind of mad at Fitz. Because it's like, you... You are the kind of the sciencey ones. You have all your theories and thoughts about all this stuff. Uh huh. And uh, never, never mind. Um, about all this stuff. And you should have been the ones that kind of be like, no, no, no. Forget all this invincible stuff. Because of that, y'all fed into what Yo Yo already believed, and that kind of just made her. It's like he blames them. It's like you're the ones that put her in that position to kill Ruby. She wouldn't have been in that position if they hadn't done the whole breakout thing and tried to do things on her own. Because Simmons was so caught up in. It. I mean, to be fair, that all started with Yo Yo. Yo Yo, who actually kind of influenced Simmons into believing that. But still, it's like you guys are the scientists and stuff like that. Yet. You let that kind of drive you. But for Fitz, it's like, I'm not going up. I'm sorry about things going down the way they did, but it's not my fault. It's not, it's something that was out of our control. Ruby needed to stop and be stopped anyway. But it's like, but we're shield. When is, you know, we are, we're not supposed to just let killing be the only option. When is that ever the only option? We can find another way. But, you know, he even talks about the fact is that Fitz. It's like you need to decide what kind of person that you want to be because the person you've been lately needs fixing. And I think that has kind of like resonated with Fitz because even Fitz was talking to Simmons about like, is this really the right thing to do? Because I think like this has left them questioning everything. It's like because we've been trying so hard to avoid this future that we've kind of I mean, that even while we're trying to avoid it, we're still feeding into it. And we're kind of making things kind of terrible for us, kind of like in the midst of all of this. It's also interesting to really quickly adding in that uh, one of the aliens had the odium. I wonder is that where Cassius got it from? Like, is it from them because of this whole Confederacy thing, or does it actually come from the? Like, I'm curious about the whole situation. But um, you even had like going back to what Simmons even being like, no, 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 no. Like the less we talk about it, the better. It's like no, I think you need to talk about it a lot more because it's like you don't know what this is going to do because like I said, you're so paranoid about each step you're taking forward and you're trying so hard to steer in one direction but it seems like destiny and fate just kind of slide you back into place. It's like no matter how hard you struggle. So I'm just I'm just curious to see what's going to happen from all of this. Like will things work? Will they keep Colson alive? Like I said, because we know about where a little bit about May's future, a little bit about, you know, Fitz and Simmons, yes, we don't have all the details in their cases, but we know a little bit beyond where things are now. Uh, but people we don't know is, you know about Mac, we know about Yo-Yo's situation. But we, well, even Mac, we don't know directly like how he died or what went down. But with Colson and Daisy, it's still a mystery because now it's like, nope, it's not even uh, Daisy that cracks open the earth. Everyone believed it was her, mainly because I guess it's because it was her power and because they were probably like, oh, Hale started kind of thinking about making Daisy the world destroyer. Plus, she was kind of like Ruby's idol to kind of su surpass and everything, surpass and everything. So maybe that's what kind of fed into that. Just because the earth being cracked open, I guess, only seemed like something she could do. But I guess the Gravitonium kind of has a similar way of handling itself, kind of similar to Daisy's quake abilities. So, I mean, because that turns out to be what Colson, I mean, uh, Talbot's all about. He's the one that cracks open the earth, apparently, because he's trying to get the gravitonium, because the more gravitonium he pulls out, the stronger he can become. So, like I said, I don't know how you're going to find a way to stop him, especially in the state that he's in, kind of going a little mad, a little crazy right now. Like I said, with each step, it's like, it's so interesting because usually with these type of things, it's like, oh, we see a big deviation, but it's like, no, it seems like currently where we are with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., it's like we're seeing things kind of play out the way they're supposed to. It seems like everything up to this point has been leading up to where they've been anyway, you know? So it seems like that future that they went to seems like it's still a big possibility. So I'm curious to see, like, are we going to see heavy deviations near the end? Will there be things at the end that kind of change everything or not, you know? 
because it doesn't seem like anything's going to be different continuing where we are. It might be a situation of like that might be the like that might just be where Agents of Shield goes. Like this is just it just is what it is. But it's like uh, I mean I don't know. I mean, I doubt it because I feel like with everything with the MCU, like that has to come about. Not less we do like another timeline, like not less like, near the end of the season. They kind of do another like, no, 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 we're going to do things differently. And we just see it over and over. Like maybe they do an interesting thing where at the end they kind of do a fast forward of the season. And it's just like things being a little different, a little different each time until they finally click. Like this could have been like in the grand scheme of the timelines, this could be timeline like five or whatever and then we see like six then seven then 19 then 27 then third you know over and over again until things change you know part of that like huge loop so maybe that kind of feeds into it i don't know that that'd be an inter interesting thing to see if that's what they do might not be the direction they take it so like i said i'm just interested to see how this all kind of plays out so like i said especially with talbot it's kind of interesting having a long time character who's always kind of been a nuisance kind of an asshole sometimes kind of getting in the way now getting in the way in a super villain sense like it, it seems like i think it's almost kind of borderline because it makes you go yeah that kind of seems like that's not 100 percent just talbot situation that kind of seems like that might be a little bit of talbot the reason why things are kind of he's kind of uh, thick-headed like that anyway he's always been very thick-headed the show's kind of built him up that way so it's almost kind of like no surprise thing he kind of goes off a little half cocked sometimes, so I don't know. It almost seems like when in grand scheme of things, like eh, it kind of fits in line with Talbot. Like I said, obviously not to this extent, but it kind of makes you go, eh, it's not too too far off from Talbot. So at least that's how I feel about it. So I don't know. I think it's something also um, May said to Yo Yo too. I thought it was kind of interesting. Hell, um, she was like, either we're going to help Colson, either you get you either find a way to help or get the hell out of the way. And I'm curious to see what she ultimately does. What, you know, because she does care about Colson, but it's like for her, it's like, oh, do whatever it takes to change the timeline. So will you feed into it? Will you help? Will you not? I'm also curious to see what she's ultimately going to do in all of this. I'm very excited because uh, there's only like two episodes left this season, so it's definitely going to be interesting to see how all of this plays out in the end. But I'm very excited to see what the next episode has in store for us to set up for the season finale. But nevertheless, really, that's all I want to talk about in this episode. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.